OMIS 351, Unit 1, Solving Business Process Problems with Information Technology. We want to learn some official frameworks and best practice methods for making the match. What we showed is the left hand and the right hand intersecting, taking a technology solution and helping it solve a business problem. These PowerPoint slides are available on our online schedule. So unless you're living in a hole or something, you are fully aware that technology is massively important in our modern world. Even this class now is online, you're watching a video. Big data, data analytics. Gartner says that information is the oil of the 21st century and analytics is the combustion engine. You can read these other quotes. Information and data are running our modern world. As a manager of tomorrow, you have to know how to apply technology solutions to business problems and evaluate the application of technology to business problems. Big market penetration in cell phones. It's getting to the point where you can assume that every one of your clients and employees has a cell phone and you are going to be able to do help your business do things faster, cheaper, and better. That is solving a business problem. It's a big deal, but there are still problems for sure. Way back in 2009, a law was signed uh, in by President Obama that said by 2014, we should all have an electronic health record. I don't know about you, <laughs> but when I go to my primary care doctor or to a specialist, they still ask me to take a pen and fill stuff in on a clipboard. That is not good. We are way past 2014 and we're still having trouble in this and other sectors. And there's some monetary penalties now for doctors and hospitals that don't do this. This becomes real money. So showing what's meaningful use. My doctor uses a laptop for prescriptions, so he probably gets away with this, even though I still have to fill in stuff on a clipboard. The lawyers are deciding what meaningful use is of an electronic health record. But nonetheless, this is serious stuff, and it's the sort of thing we're going to be paying attention to. To help you with your participation quiz, I've made a document here in Microsoft Word that will repeat many of the questions, and you should expect to get a 100% on your participation quiz for each unit. This one's not in your participation quiz, this first question. This is an opinion question, but this is the sort of thing you should be thinking about in this class. In 2014, the NFL decided to put some RFID tags in play players' shoulder pads. And here's the million dollar question. NFL is a very big business. I don't know if they had a problem or not. The problem might have been, you know, declining ratings. So they said, let's put RFID tags. Let's, here's our technology solution. And the million dollar question, you need to be able to evaluate. We will talk about frameworks. We will talk about methods to help you evaluate. But the first thing, of course, is you have to understand the vocabulary. The acronyms in this case, what are these, what are these? Many students will say, Dr. Downing, what is an RFID tag? You cannot evaluate this if you don't know the vocabulary. So just quickly here, RFID is an acronym that stands for Radio Frequency Identification. When possible, I like to try to make complicated topics simple, give you the simplest possible explanation. That's a good practice for you going forward when you make client presentations. Don't try and seem smart by talking fancy. Try to be clear. So in this example, I would say an RFID tag is a wireless barcode. So think about a barcode when you go to a grocery store. You come to the front, 
all the products have a barcode on it they scan it on the glass plate to speed up the line well think if you didn't have to place the product on the glass plate think if it was wireless so you put an RFID tag on a product instead of a barcode and you can just run it through a reader and scan an entire grocery cart for example and then charge the credit card and that would speed things up incredibly think of iPass in your car if you have an iPass or if your parents do that's an RFID tag you go through the readers on the highway at certain points and the state of Illinois charges you to use the highway and it's very efficient because you don't have to stop at a toll booth like in the past and so so many questions what about the future of education with technology is watching videos as good as being in a classroom um, what other technology options are there how can this be improved what about health care you say well m you know maybe maybe health care is okay well I told you I just told you no it's not <laughs> no it's not uh, and we have the efficiency but what about the effectiveness what if you give somebody you know what if you make an error and give someone something they're allergic to these are catastrophic problems and these three I think you know chuckdowning.com omis351 go to the course webpage so I mentioned in the introduction we might have a video that video is no longer available on YouTube but there was a video about a guy who in, invented sliced bread it was an I, old IBM video and the point of the video is the guy who invented sliced bread didn't invent slicing that existed and he didn't invent bread bread is kind of the business problem here and slicing is the technology solution he made the match so what this means for you is what we've talked about and it's kind of the central theme of this class you absolutely have to understand first of all what it is if you don't know what RFID is you cannot evaluate a question about it but you also have to understand how it works and its potential its promise if you can do that you become incredibly valuable to businesses here these three questions are going to be covered in the videos for VC1 virtual case one so just know that they may appear on the participation quiz they will appear uh, so watch those videos carefully when you complete your web page how do you get an Excel file I mean if you're talking about matching technology solutions to business problems web pages and Excel spreadsheets are two fundamental tools that you have to know as a manager so VC1 gives you some hands-on practice with those and there are video tutorials to help you so where do you find what's required on the, the link which is on the schedule how to do it the tutorial videos and get extra help you have the help system for the class and you have emails with Dr. Downing and the TA okay so back to our central themes we're talking about this right here which of these is a good example yes no why is this a no think about your classmate who buys the biggest fastest laptop that's great congratulations your family has a lot of money you have a lot of money but if they're not using it to become a better student then they've fallen into this trap where people will get romanced by technology and buy expensive technology but without really thinking how it's going to solve the business problem this right here we're not told anything about this except it's a bigger hard drive well so what so that's a no as it's written what about this 
This was actually devised in Omus 351. This this match came out of Omus 351 several years ago, and it now is in place where they put a GPS device again. What does that mean? Global positioning system. It's what you have in your phones where you can get directions. It's how that works. And now students, if it's raining outside, could see where the buses were. So there's more than one correct answer here. This is correct. This is yes. Here's another one of these. No. No. You're not telling me how this is going to make you, well, it says get a better grade, but it doesn't say how. You know, you got to tell me how. Just faster, just bigger is not sufficient. RFID tags attract inventory. Yeah, good. This is a yes. As written, no. You got to tell me, you know, when people buy the iWatch, boy, you look cool, I guess. But I have my iPhone in my pocket, and I would say to you that almost everything you do, I can do with my iPhone in my pocket. So you may have a technology solution in search of a problem, which means you wasted some money. Now I get that you have faster access if you're looking at your texts on your wrist or something, and that's okay. So that, but you know, there's subtleties here, but I would say generally no. All right, back over to the PowerPoint slides. You are going to live in this world whether you like it or not. The consultant comes in and says, blah, 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 cloud, you know, blah, 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 and that'll be $5,000. And he, of course, is impressed. He's like, what's going on? So you have to evaluate matches. You have to evaluate consultants. You have to understand what's going on to participate in the business world of today and tomorrow. In this case, what is, what's cloud? Cloud is storing stuff on the internet. So you can access the information through an internet connection, but you do not have it on your physical computer or physical hard drive or physical flash drive. Facebook is an example of the cloud. If you post a picture to Facebook, it's now stored by Facebook. You can access it anywhere you have an internet connection, but you do not store it on a physical computer. Facebook has to store it. So it's actually still just stored on a computer, but it's in the internet. But that's not the point here. The point is we have to cut through the jargon, the acronyms, so we can evaluate and help our business move forward. You're going to be managing in the information age, and it's the contrast to the computer age. I made another Word document here to give you a nice definition of the information age. And if you need to, just pause the video to read it. The computer age, that's like your roommate buying a faster laptop than you. Okay. But what problem is it solving? And it might solve a problem. An information age is related to effectiveness, kind of higher order goals. Market share, customer satisfaction, strategic goals. Computer age is similar to efficiency. It's good to have a fast laptop. That's a good thing. But not if it's not aligned with a business goal or solving a specific problem. That's the point of the contrast. So as a manager, you have to discern those things. It's exciting for you. It's frightening for many aging, older, middle managers or any executives. Why? Your business can be destroyed if you do not have the correct social media presence, for example. Well, if you're someone who's 60 years old, you might not be so keen on managing the social media presence. So these managers need help. They need help from you. If you take a physics class or a calculus class across campus, 
you know, th those fields haven't changed since Isaac Newton. This field, information technology field, changing every day. You pick something up in the on a website this morning that that might add to this lecture. You can mention that in one of the discussion boards on Blackboard and tell us you saw something new. It moves incredibly quickly. Very exciting. All this stuff going on, the business models are changing. Telecommunications is available to everybody. You know, Geico says 15 minutes can save you 15%, I think is their slogan, and I'm not trying to do a Geico commercial. But processes have been improved, so we can do things faster and more accurately. Uh, this bullet point, I talk about an example where, let's say I go buy Fruit Loops at, the, at Jewel every Wednesday, and you watch the evolution of technology solutions the first one was moving from a price tag to a barcode that sped up the line that was an efficiency gain that was important it was good but if you look for an effectiveness gain or an information age gain remember this explanation you say okay well how about we give dr downing a rewards card which is scanned every time he visits us. And now, instead of just knowing that a box of Fruit Loops came off the shelf, which is still important for inventory management, with the preferred card, now we know that Dr. Downing, whose email address and text number and address we have, we know that Dr. Downing bought a box of Fruit Loops on Wednesday and then we look at the trend and we see that Dr. Downing has bought a box of Fruit Loops every Wednesday. Well and then what's the what's the strategic action? What's the information age action that you could take here? There are infinite number. One example would be let's send Dr. Downing a coupon for Jewel generic frosted O's to arrive in his text inbox on Tuesday, for example. We know he's coming to buy Fruit Loops on Wednesday. Let's give him a discount. Maybe he'll buy our store brand. Maybe we can shift his buying behavior and increase our profits. These are the sort of things that you have the opportunity to be able to do. And again, it's incredibly exciting to be able to think about that sort of data analytics where you can make these sort of decisions.